हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम इन लेवन सी एच टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट हीट कंडक्शन थ्रू ए प्लेन वॉल राइट सो दिस इज अवर फ्रंट व्यू ऑफ प्लेन वॉल एंड दिस इज द योर वाई एंड एक्स एक्सिस वे आर इन वाई एक्सिस आई एम द टेम्परेचर विच एम आई रिप्रेजेंटिंग इन वाई एक्सिस एंड इन एक्स एक्सिस आई एम रिप्रेजेंटिंग द थिकनेस ऑफ द वॉल सो हेयर my wall is okay in this y axis in this in this xy plane so you can see here this is my geometry okay so the temperature the temperature of this wall is t1 and the temperature of this wall is t2 and the heat is transferring from the t1 to t2 in this direction and we can say the parallel of x axis okay and here i am taking a strip the thickness of this strip is dx and the temperature of this strip is dt why i am considering dx and dt i'll tell you later right and i am here i am assuming that my t1 is greater than t2 okay and because of that heat is transferring from here to here and the temperature and that's why the temperature difference is occur and here from this axis the y axis uh, if i measure the distance so this is x1 and this is x2 and if i talk about this thickness so it will be x2 minus x1 right before deriving the equation of plane wall first we will see that which assumptions we are taking here right so my assumptions are here i am taking five assumptions and those assumptions are the first one is one dimensional heat transfer okay one dimensional heat transfer means i am taking here only in the my heat is transferring in x direction right i can say here qx and that is also qx and it means that here the heat is not transferring in three dimension and two dimension you can also see that and the second thing is steady state process means the variable is not changing with time the third one is thermal conductivity remains same it does not vary with temperature what is that mean this is my plane wall okay and i am taking its thermal conductivity that is k okay so what is this k this k is thermal conductivity of this plane wall and the k is property of the material which tells us that how how what is the capacity end of the material to conduct heat and the fourth assumption is isothermal surfaces what is what is that mean it means that the temperature of this surface will be remain t1 and the temperature of this surface will be remain t2 okay uh, we cannot say that if uh, if suppose you are you are saying that the temperature here t2 and here t2 dash and here t2 three so we cannot assume or we cannot apply our this derivation which am i using here right so these assumptions are prerequisite uh, to derive the equation and my fourth i have done and my fifth assumption is no heat generation or no heat is retained in the system what is that mean it means that the in here if the uh, heat is qx here so it will be also qx here there is nothing is retaining and nothing is generating no heat is generating within the system and no and no heat is retaining within the system okay so this was the mean of complete assumption which we are taking while deriving the heat transfer rate in a plane wall okay now we will see and we will apply fourier's law and then we will derive the equation of heat transfer right so we know the fourier's law right we know the fourier law of heat conduction which states that heat flux is directly proportional to temperature gradient so we know that right so what is heat flux heat flux is heat transfer rate per unit area directly proportional to temperature gradient and the temperature gradient is dt by dx okay so here this q by a which am i writing here equal to i am instead of this proportionality sign i am using here k okay minus k okay dt by dx now guys see here i am using here minus sign okay why i am using this minus sign i also told you in my first video of a heat conduction through hollow cylinder and i am also again telling you about this minus sign why we are using here minus sign because if you will see 
in this figure now so you will see that t1 and here is the temperature is t2 means temperature is decreasing and we can also say heat is going from here to here in a negative direction or in decreasing the temperature direction right and i am also assuming that my t1 is greater than t2 okay while solving this integral when i will integrate this so i will use the limit that will be t1 initial to final okay and dt okay you can understand it and when i'll solve it then i'll find find that t2 minus t1 this is a general solution but you will see you will see that if suppose there is no this minus sign okay if this sign this minus sign is not there so my solution will become negative okay that's why to eliminate this minus sign i am using earlier minus sign now i have derived this equation now what i'll do i'll rearrange it first and then i'll integrate it okay so before that i am using here boundary conditions so you can see the boundary condition so my first boundary condition will be so see here at temperature at x1 at x1 my temperature is t1 okay and at when x is equal to x2 then the temperature is t2 right so now first i'll rearrange this equation okay suppose this equation is suppose this is a equation number 1 i am rearranging it so how, how i will write i'll write that dx is equal to minus k a dt and i can say divided by q right now integrate it integrate this equation suppose this is equation number 2 integrate equation number 2 with proper limits so here dx so i am using first dx from initial limit that is x1 to final limit that is x2 equal to minus k a right here i am also using here dt and the q will be here t1 to t2 right why this minus k divided by q outside the integral because these three terms are constant and they will not change with time now when i will solve this integral so i will find that x2 minus x1 equal to minus k a divided by q t2 minus t1 okay now just simplify this equation so i'll find that k a t1 minus t2 divided by q okay so i have to find the value of this q so i can write that q equal to k a t1 minus t2 divided by x2 minus x1 now i have derive the heat transfer rate equation okay so and i assume that this is my equation number third now i can also simplify this equation by writing q equal to k a delta t divided by delta x this delta is representing the difference dif difference between t1 to t2 and difference between x2 minus x1 right and now i can also simplify it and i can write this equation in term of uh, driving force and resistance and it will become like that delta t divided by delta x divided by ka i can write k here as well so it will become delta t now divided by this equation okay this equation will be become my r okay what is that r guys this r is resistance this r is so what is this r this r is that how much resistance the plane wall is offering to do not flow to the heat transfer right we can say like that so now i can i can also express this r with the help of this ohm's law you can see 
here uh, the ohms law and we know the ohms law right we, what is the ohms law ohms law states that current is equal to v by r here this v is a driving force right what this v tells us about the driving force and this r is about the resistance right the same i can see it here like suppose this is t1 and this is t2 so i can say that my r will be delta x divided by k a and the q will be delta t divided by i am writing here r so this delta t is my driving force which is responsible for heat transfer okay because of this i am able to see the temperature difference and i can uh, i am able to see the this heat transfer process which is occurring within the plane wall and this is my resistance so now when you will see this equation okay when you will see this equation i am talking about this equation so here what will be the unit of uh, if i am using here si unit so we can also tell about the units as well so suppose i am here representing this unit in a si system okay so now we have to find the unit of unit of k right so here i am just, i am writing the all all the units in si system so the q will be in watt okay q will be in watt okay so now we have to find the limit of k so we can just write that k okay the area area in meter square the temperature in kelvin dx that is the unit of length so it will also become m so here one m is cancel out so what will be the limit of k so we can just simply write that w k is equal to w divided by meter kelvin okay this will be the limit of k in si system okay so what is w here w is a watt which is a un si unit of heat transfer rate okay what is delta t the temperature of temp the unit of temperature is kelvin the unit of area is meter square okay this is a watt now guys please let me in comments box what will be the unit of q and k in fps system so now i hope you have understood this equation very well and in our upcoming videos i'll also tell you some other geometries derivation as well so if you like this video so you can subscribe our youtube channel and you can share this video as well and if you have doubt in heat transfer so you can ask in a comments box or if you have any doubt in this video you can also ask in a comment box and you can join our telegram group as well so that's all for today thank you for watching